This video will discuss how stochastic process or calculus is applied in real industry practice. Teachers in school usually lack of industry experience, so they may don't know. Most people would think that stochastic calculus only apply in pricing or valuation, but that's not fully correct. In fact, stochastic calculus is a part of probability, since the Brown motion or Wiener process in stochastic process is a normal distribution, and a probability can solve a lot of problems not only in finance, in quantitative finance, but also other things like better game, modeling, or hypothesis test, or even autoregression process in statistics can also be a stochastic process problem. For example, if we modeling autoregression like dy of t plot equals to some number times dy t minus 1, it's an autoregression problem. The first application of stochastic process or stochastic calculus is pricing, or let's say more accurately, it's evaluation. Fair value is determined by mass, but the price is not determined by mass. It's determined by supply and demand. Or the price change is de decided by supply and demand. The valuation is to construct a martingale process to let the current value equal to the expected future value. Let's say V0 equals to the expected value of V subscript time uh, big T depends on the information at time zero. So F0 can also be called a filtration in math terms. I understand it like all the information at time zero you get. The asset can be anything. It can be option or real estate. It can also be other any other uh, asset. It can be bond, option, swap, or swaption. Swaption, by the way, is the option on swap. So here, the underline is a swap. If you want to know how to judge whether a process is a martingale or how to change a process from a non-martingale to martingale, uh, please check my previous videos. The important part of evaluation is to calculate the implied parameters. If it is an option, the implied volatility, the implied parameter is volatility, which is called implied volatility. If it is corporate bond, it's a Z spread. If it's a treasury bond, it's a yield to maturity. If we have a closed form inverse function, uh, by the way, implied parameters is calculated from inverse function. That's the better, that's the best case. But if you don't have a closed form inverse function, we can calculate from other things. For example, we can use binary search in computer science. Um, so um, if the function is a monotonous with that implied parameter or new to method, but know that f prime of x cannot be close to zero, and its initial value x zero must be very close to the true root, to the real root. And pricing can also be used for trading mispricing opportunities. For example, if you have a volatility smile, volatility surface, and the actual options implied of all is under the smile. So this option is undervalued, and we loan this option. And if the options vol is above the volatility surface, we shot. Here in this case, we the money we use in long is from the short part. So it's a self-financing, and the profit comes from the relative mispriced. So this strategy is called relative value strategy and short for RV strategy. The second application of a stochastic process or a stochastic calculus is to find winning probability in trading, given the pre prediction and stop loss and profit taking. Let's say we have an uptrend. So dy or uh, dx equals to dt plus dw of t. So now I want to know the probability of price that reaches the profit taking before the stop loss. And here, the profit taking, let's say, equals to 1, and the stop loss equals to negative 2, 
just to say some random numbers there. So if it is a martingale, it's very easy to solve this question, but it's not a martingale in this case because we do have a dt, which is a drift term here. And we can change the measure using exponential martingale to make it into a martingale. So in that way, we can find some arbitrary lambda number. In this case, I believe lambda can be like negative two or negative four. Uh, we have some details to solve these questions before in our previous videos. And now we have the winning probability. Now we decide to trade or not. So it really depends on your own risk aversion. Uh, let's say if you think the winning ratio is above 80% you trade and below 80% you don't trade. That really depends on you. The winning probability is also a function of stop loss and profit taking and a winning ratio can change your sharp ratio. And a sharp ratio is very important. Um, but it's not very important for everyone. It may be important for institutional investor, but if you are a single person and you are young, you don't uh, you, you like return, you don't like uh, you can bear a lot of risk. Then sharp ratio may not be your objective function. So here, note that please be clear about your objective function. Are you going to maximize your sharp ratio, or are you going to maximize your return? Higher sharp ratio does not usually mean higher return. So if you change your objective function, you should also change your profit taking and a stop loss point because that change your function of winning probability. Okay, to wrap up, so almost any question or any issue in this world is a stochastic question, or you can call it a probability question. Uh, Brown motion winner process are a normal distribution. For reality, you can also replace normal distribution to T distribution with a degree of freedom equals to three. That's how SP five hundred is. And all right, um, I think that's all. That's all for today's video. So if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, you can also check my GitHub page for more details about, about my tutorialship. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.